Hey there everyone, just a really short video today, maybe showing you how um, software like Celebri can help you um, validate and check the quality of not just the geometry that you have in the model, but also the information that you have in the model as well. And I want to give you a quick BIM example today. So I've got a very simple building um, and inside of this building I have some assets for instance, um, and some of those assets like this door, for instance, um, I've attached some Kobe data to. Not all Kobe data, but some Kobe data. Um, the building has also been defined as a Kobe facility. Um, I've got some lighting fixtures and fittings in here as well. Um, and I have some, um, some Kobe data in there. So what I'm going to do is with this Revit file is just get this out to IFC. Uh, make sure that you use the alternate UI um, so that you can correctly go out to the right kinds of model view definitions. Let's just throw this onto my desktop so I can find it very quickly. And I'm going to use IFC 2 times 3 coordination view 2 if I want geometry. Um, but remember that won't always send out your Revit properties as well. Um, if you want Revit properties, you would need to go into modify the setup and make sure you also include um, property sets, export Revit property sets. Could potentially make the model quite heavy and quite messy. So in this instance, we're just going to be um, focusing on Kobe today. So we're just going to say that we want to use our, um, where are we? Uh, Kobe 2.4 design deliverable on IFC 2 times 3 and we're going to say export. Not a huge model so this will just take a couple of minutes um, if not a couple of seconds just to get this export done and then we can jump across into Celebri and open the model up. So inside Celebri we'll choose open model, we'll grab the newly created IFC from our desktop. Celebri will open that up and, uh, and check what information we have in here. I'm not going to do any federating today, I just want to look at the individual model. And I'm just going to check that it's come across with the Kobe data. So let's use our info tool, let's go and grab this door here and make sure that it has picked up that it's a Kobe component and that it's got Kobe information in there where relevant. Again, you'll notice that there's certain properties that don't exist here. That's because an IFC will not export um, properties as such if they don't have information in there. So there's a couple of things that we can do inside of um, Celebri to make sure that what we have is correct and valid um, from a management perspective. So let's just jump back into uh, the file tab. I'm just going to go down for the purpose of today to my roles and I'm just going to create a brand new role. So from the role area, let's just come and hit save as. We're just going to save it on my desktop so I can find it and delete it easily later and I'm just going to call it sample role. Now quite simply, a role inside of Celebri is, um, is basically a collection of rule sets, classifications, inf information takeoffs. None of these I need for the purposes of this short demonstration, so I'm going to take them all off. I'm also going to take out all of the default rules because quite frankly, we don't need any further purposes of today. So for what I want to show you, I want a completely blank role. With that role, I'm going to head over into the rule set manager. And in the rule set manager, I have areas where I have example rule sets. So these are the default ones that Celebri comes preloaded with, which are pretty good to use. We have a list of library rules, which are blank rule templates for us to use. We have an area on the right, which will show us the parameters of the rules that we have selected. And we have our workspace where we're building up our rules. I've just noticed that my Celebri model has some rule sets open, so I'm just going to come back into the Celebri model checker very quickly and just jump back in and make sure that I close these rule sets down because I don't want them in here for now. So let's just take them out, jump back into our rule set manager, select once, rule sets open in SMC, and then come down to your workspace and create a new rule set. I'm going to select it, come up the top and just say this is a sample rule set. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of today. Within there, I'm going to right click and create a new sub rule set. And we're going to say that this is an IFC check. We want to make sure that any model that we open up has been exported with the correct IFC version and model view definition. Really easy to check that inside of Celebri. Um, we use one of our library rules. We come from our common rules. We come down and we find component property rule template with component filters and we drag and drop that 
into our IFC check. I'm going to select it and say this is our IFC version check because I first want to make sure or check whether it's IFC 2 times 3 or IFC 4 or whatever it is that you want to check against. Make sure you add yourself a description and a, and a name. Um, I'm not going to for the purpose of today, but very good practice to make sure that you do that. All we do in Celebri is check for something that already exists. So if I head to my model and use my model tree to select the top level, you will notice at the top level of an IFC, you will get information about the IFC file, the file name itself, the schema that it's using. In the schema, you'll notice that we can pick up that it's using IFC 2 times 3. So in a property set against the facility, we can look in the IFC file schema property set and have a property called schema name, which has got a value of IFC 2 times 3. If I go back to file and rule set manager and use this Intel that I've just got from the model, I can say, do you know what? I want to check include rather than any, I specifically want to look at containers and I want to look at the building, the facility. So go and find the building. If you had um, um, lots of models federated together, you might need to add some further properties to filter this down. But for this purpose, I only have one. So go and include my building. Requirements here, we're going to add a line and we're going to say include any. We've already segregated it here. You could come down and say include any building again. We shouldn't need to include any. We've already segregated it to building. But if you really wanted to, you could say building again. So we're saying that each building must have a property. Now using my memory, I'm going to go to property sets. There is a property set under the building that I need to be able to use. The property set is not listed here, but I can go back and check what that property set was called and make sure that I put that into the location. The reason being is I've selected the wrong level. I've selected the building level, which is here. You see this icon rather than this level. So actually, if we go back, Celebra is quite intelligent in that it lets you or prompts you where you might have something wrong. If I go to project and select OK and go to project here and select OK and now go into my properties and my property sets, you should notice those missing properties. So we want the file schema property set. We want the schema name property and we're looking for a bit of text. And then quite simply, we want to make sure that that is one of IFC 2 times 3. So in other words, if it's not IFC 2 times 3, it's going to fail. If I jump back into Celebri, go to the checking tab and hit check, this rule should pass with flying colors. If I select the rule, come to my summary down here to see what's been checked, I can check and make sure that one has been passed. I also like to confirm that the rule is working by going into my rule set manager and changing the parameter to something else. So I'm just going to say none of IFC 2 times 3 so make sure it's not. This should get me a failure and therefore I can tell that the rule is working. So there's our first rule. Let's just drop that back so it's the correct value. I then want to go and make sure that the correct model view definition has worked. So as well as the schema, I want to make sure that against that individual building that it's working with the right model view definition that may have been specified on the project. In this case, we want to make sure that it's using the Kobe 2.4 design deliverable. So I use exactly the same rule, but this time the file description and I make sure that the description contains a certain amount of properties. For instance, let's go back to file, let's go back to rule set manager, and let's say right click, copy, and then paste it in at the top level. I'm going to rename that to IFC model view definition check rather than version. If you really wanted to be specific, we could rename IFC version to schema. And in here, this time, we're just going to come down exactly the same rule, but against property, rather than using file schema, we're going to say file description. 
and then rather than one of, we're going to say contains, and we're just going to put star, which is a wild card, Kobe, 2.4 star. Again, don't be afraid to go back into the model and check Kobe without a space 2.4. Because I've got a star beforehand and afterwards, it really doesn't care what is around that. As long as it says Kobe 2.4, it will be picked up as a pass. Now, this is a Revit model. You might have different results using ARCHICAD. Sometimes these are slightly um, differently formatted, so you need to work and make sure that you've got a rule that works for any files that you may receive. But in this case now, if I go and check, I have a pass against the schema and I have a pass against the model view definition. Again, if you want to, we can make sure that that is working correctly by saying does not contain or none of When we check again now, this one comes up with an error. So I always like to make sure it does pass and make sure it does fail. And now we have those two versions. We can use exactly the same rule configuration to check that Kobe data exists and is valid within the model. So let's just pick this door here as it's right in front of our face or we could be very um, specific and actually pick a managed asset instead. So let's just use my hide tool and hide some components here and then pick our info tool up just here. So we have a light fixture. That light fixture has Kobe data, so it's a Kobe type. So I'm gonna go and make sure that it has information defined within the Kobe type. I'm particularly going to pick up the manufacturer because in this case I know it's blank and I want it to come up with a failure. So I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna to to rule set manager. I'm gonna right click at the sample rule set at the top and create a new rule set. I'm gonna call this Kobe checks. And again, you would want to give this a description to make sure that it's giving you something um, that it's gonna remind you later on why you've created it and what it's doing. All we're gonna do again here is use the exact same rule, property rule template with component filters. We're gonna drag and drop it into our Kobe folder. From in here, we're gonna specify a filter to what components we're going to want to check. So we could come in here and we could uh, say any component that has Kobe defined. For example, when you use the Kobe add-in inside of Revit, under each component that's gonna be Kobe, it will have Kobe.component, Kobe is true or Kobe is false. If that's false, it's not a Kobe um, component. Therefore, it won't have the properties attached to it. So we could say, wherever we have Kobe data, we want to check for something. So I'm gonna say in my rule set manager, include any component who has a property set of Kobe type. I want to give it or make sure it has Kobe and I want that to be one of true. In other words, include every component that is defined as a Kobe type. Once you've got that, go and make sure that their GUID, uh, sorry, not their GUID, go and make sure that their property set, Kobe.type, manufacturer, none of blank or you could just say include any kobe.type manufacturer uh, and leave, leave the property blank it really depends on how you want to work but in this case none of blank in other words make sure it's not blank make sure it has a value if you're expecting to have very specific values in there you just fill a list with specific values but in this case, we make sure that we have that property. You could have two levels of this if you wanted to. So you could have a second level and actually say that to begin with, you actually want to check Kobe type manufacturer field exists, which would be include that one is defined. 
If we just work with that for a second, what that will do is it will check that every single model that's been defined as a Kobe type has a manufacturer field, which it does in this case. I could then check the value of that either as an individual or as a group. So this is already checking every Kobe type. If I take this rule and drag and drop it onto this rule, it creates a gatekeeper. Selecting the top level of that gatekeeper, I can say that I want to check all past components. In other words, if this fails, it will pick up a failure and say that we've got some, um, some instances where the manufacturing field doesn't exist. If this passes, we've got the ability to then check everything that it passes to see if it's got a manufacturing value. From there, if I say file, checking, check. The first level passes, the second level has failed. We now have instances of air terminal types. Remember, I'm looking at types, so it's the type rather than each instance. Air terminal types where it does not have a valid value. And using that configuration of rule, which is extremely easily in software like Celebri Model Checker, we can check that our Kobe outputs are going to be correct. Remember to be able to fully validate Kobe correctly 100% you would need to validate it against the on-site information after the assets have been installed. However, to, to you know, get to that point, we need to make sure that everything inside of the BIM is correct to begin with. And we can use this tool um, greatly to be able to do that before we start checking against actual on-site data later on. I hope that's been useful. Really, it's, it's so straightforward just using the property rule template with component filters to check for um, all of these types of properties in Celebri. Until next time, thanks for watching.